If you're lifting weights, you wanna gain muscle mass or you wanna get cut or both. So a lot of people use protein supplements. But what does science tell us? Do they work? How much should you take? And are they safe? Let's get into it. Protein is one of the three sources of energy used by our body, which are called macronutrients, carbs, fat, protein. Muscles are made of protein, and there's a constant turnover where the protein in your muscles is being broken down and repaired, and when you work out, that breakdown and repair gets accelerated, so you need more protein in your body to keep up with that process. And that's sometimes called keeping a positive nitrogen balance, because protein is high in nitrogen. And the goal here is to keep your muscles in what we call an anabolic state, which simply means that you're building more muscle than you're losing. And there are many studies that show that protein supplementation effectively does this. It suppresses muscle protein breakdown and drives muscle protein synthesis, which is then further increased by your resistance training or your weightlifting. And the end result is what's called muscle hypertrophy or bigger muscles. But the question is how much protein do you actually need? So the amount of protein that your body needs varies as a function of your age, sex, and level of physical activity. As a starting point, just to meet your basic metabolic needs, Guidelines recommend about 0.8 grams of protein per day for each kilogram of what's called lean body weight. That's about 0.36 grams per pound. And if you want a more precise number, you can use the dietary reference indicator, which lets you enter your info. So let's say you're a 25 year old woman, five foot five, 130 pounds. You'll need about 2,700 calories a day, including 47 grams of protein. Now that being said, studies show that if you're exercising, and especially if you're lifting weights, your needs are much higher than that. How much is the right amount for building muscle is a topic of hot debate because it varies somewhat across studies. But it's safe to say that you need at least double the basic needs, so around 0.72 grams per pound per day, with some studies suggesting up to one gram per pound per day. So that same 130 pound woman who's lifting weights might need between 100 and 130 grams of protein per day. And although there's also a debate about timing and spacing, there may be benefits in spreading that protein out to give your body more time to use it. For example, if you were to break it down across four meals, it would be a maximum of 0.25 grams per pound of body weight per meal, or about 35 to 40 grams per meal for someone who weighs 150 pounds. And that brings us to your meals. Remember that most of the protein you need is going to come from your regular meals. Here are some examples. Eating a banana, a Greek yogurt, and a hard-boiled egg will get you about 19 grams of protein. A three-ounce chicken breast with a half cup of rice and a half cup of veggies is about 25 grams of protein, and a half cup of chili with a quarter cup of peanuts is about 16 grams. And you can boost your natural protein consumption by eating protein-rich foods. And here's a list. Egg whites, cheese, milk, chicken, red meat, seafood, soy, nuts, seeds, tofu, and lentils. That being said, supplements do give you a different kind of protein. Usually they contain whey protein, which is called a fast acting protein because it gets absorbed really fast and that can be very effective immediately after a workout. On the other hand, the protein you get in dietary sources is absorbed more gradually over the day. And although some studies do show that whey protein has a greater effect on muscle growth, others show no difference. What's nice about protein is that it's very effective at making you feel full and suppressing your appetite. At the same time, your body consumes more energy when it uses protein, which translates to a higher metabolic rate. Both of those things will help you to get more cut. But there are calories in your protein powder itself, which go beyond just the protein. The number of calories will depend on the type of protein, how much fat and lactose was left over during the purifying process, and whether the product is flavored. So look for the lower calorie, higher protein product with a good rule of thumb being about 150 calories or less and at least 20 grams of protein per serving. Now I like my French vanilla, but as you can see, I'm still okay here. So look up the food you're eating and if you're eating a balanced diet and especially if you're consuming protein rich foods, you might not need to supplement much and in some cases you may not need to supplement at all. But the question that often comes up is, will consuming too much protein actually harm you? The good news is that we have a lot of studies that have looked at this. You may have heard that protein is bad for the bones, and people think this because protein loading does increase calcium excretion in the urine. However, studies now show that long-term high protein intake actually improves bone mineral density. And you will also often hear that excess protein consumption can damage the kidneys. Although protein can pose a challenge to people who already have kidney disease, multiple studies have not shown damaging effects in healthy individuals. But keep in mind that if you do take too much protein, especially at one sitting,
the body can't actually store it as protein. It either uses it for other metabolic purposes, or in a roundabout way, some of it can end up being converted to fat, though studies show that it probably doesn't result in long-term fat accumulation. So what's the bottom line with protein? It's an essential nutrient, it will help you to build muscle, and it has other benefits like accelerating your metabolic rate and suppressing your appetite. You can get a lot of protein from your diet alone, but you might need supplements to get you up to a maximum of about one gram per pound per day to optimize muscle growth. Anything more than that is unlikely to help you to build muscle, but probably won't harm you either, except for the cost of those supplements. Stay tuned for our episode on creatine, and for more health and science info, subscribe to the feed.